Howdy! Welcome to another episode of Vapes and Hops, your weekly vape and beard pairing discussion. No. No. Close. This is Vinyl and Vapes, your weekly dose of record and vape pairing. Still not right. Almost. I got it. This is episode nine of Vinyl and Ops. Yes. Got it. <laughs> Third time's a charm. That's right. Where we're going to discuss some tasty beverages and some tasty tunes for your ear holes. Your ears are holes too. Dip the tunes down your gullet, your ear gullet. You can almost think of the records as like a beer bong for your ears. Or a shotgun beer for your ears. That's right, shotgun beers for your ears. You heard it here first. What are we drinking? I have probably one of my favorite beers from the only brewery that will force you to shotgun beers when you go there is Buffalo Bayou's More Cowbell. Uh, it's their double, or yeah, their American double IPA, 9%. Super hoppy, super strong, super easy to drink, and yeah, you can easily go through a four pack and then feel awful the next morning. Um, but it's I it's one of my favorite IPAs from Houston. Hmm. Everything about it is just great. There it is, Buffalo Bayou. Check them out. Yes, go there if you get a chance. Come on down. You can stay with Bray. You can't probably. <laughs> no, have a zoo. You'd have to pay admission. That's right. Anyway, let's dive into some vinyl. Today we're going to talk about our favorite colored variants. Uh, it's kind of, I don't know when colored vinyl started appearing. Um, I don't know. Was it, has it always been a thing? I don't, I don't know. It's definitely prevalent more so now with the resurgence of vinyl. Um, but I feel like I'm seeing more in the last five or ten years than I've seen uh, before that. So They're getting crazy with some of the stuff I see out there now too. I mean, it's things that I didn't even know they could do. I'm waiting for a hologram. Like it's not even real. Like I'm just like, Here, here's the new, here's the new record. Maybe someday. You just gave somebody an idea. That's right. So let me start things off here with torture from Cannibal Corpse. Let me pull this out. This is a fantastic album. Um, Scourge of Iron. Yes, that is my favorite song on this album. It's just got a real slow kind of sludge to it, which is different from the frantic uh, riffage you hear on the Cannibal Corpse record. That's some very interesting artwork. Yes, it is. So look at that bad boy. It's a nice little splatter vinyl. Red splatter on clear vinyl. And yes, the, the artwork, oh, that's the lyrics, you want to see that, <laughs> is uh, Cannibal Corpse. Cannibal Corpse, not Cannibal Corpse. Cannibal Corpse-esque. That's a tongue twister as well. So, yeah, I've uh, got a couple Cannibal Corpse records. I'd like to get their earlier catalog on vinyl, especially Eating Back the Life, which is one of my favorite Corpse albums. Um, and The Bleeding, that's my second favorite. So, not too familiar. Some good old death metal from Buffalo, New York. They later relocated to Tampa, but... You're claiming them. Buffalo! <laughs> we'll take Cannibal Corpse. I like them. Some people, I don't know, uh, don't really... I feel like they don't get enough respect, but... Um, I can't say I'm that familiar with them. I'll have to check them out, though. I will send you some tracks. There we go. What do you got? What you got? What do I got? I'm going to start with some technical modern metal with Between the Buried and Me colors, which comes on two discs, and they're both this modern discs, records, whatever, words. Um, That's awesome. If you've watched episodes of this before, I'm not great with terminology. I forget words and just say things, and Rob corrects me, so <laughs> anyway, there's two of these. They're both this 
beautiful bright green um, and if you've never heard anything from Between the Barrier to Me this was the first album I listened to from them um, Ants of the Sky is still probably one of my favorite songs from them just because it's so ridiculous um, and I think it's a good representation of their technical abilities but um, you know their sounds kind of change from album to album some, sound, some albums have stuff that's a little bit slower or you know, a little more melodic and this album's kind of just like beats you into the ground with skills. Oddly enough, that's the record I stopped listening to, Between the Barrier to Me. <laughs> Granted, I only listened to them for one album, and that was Alaska. Which is a great album. And I saw them for $10. That's a deal. With, I think, the red cord and acacia strain, hmm. if I remember correctly, in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I got a sweet BT Bam shirt that said, Kiss Me, I'm a Shredder on the back. Size small. <laughs> because that's how I did it. That's how I rolled. I'm guessing that doesn't fit you anymore. I wish I still had it. I'd try. Uh, I'd wear it right now. <laughs> uh, another great one here. This is Reek of Putrefaction from Carcass. This is from more of the grindcore days. But it's on Pestilence Purple, which I thought was very cool. This was um, from the reissues that uh, Eric did uh, a few years ago. So this is just a nice uh, kind of, almost got a little red in it a little bit, but it's just, uh, I don't know what color purple you, you would call that. But Apparently Pestilence Purple. Pestilence Purple it is. Um, not a huge fan of this record. I really, there's, there's some songs that are good. It's, I'm not a fan of poor recording quality, which I know isn't very true in the metal world sometimes. But God damn it, I want to hear your riffs and I want to hear them recorded. Recorded. I just want to hear them recorded. Cleanly. Cleanly. Properly. Yes. I just want to hear I want to hear how good it can be. And you know, the first couple carcass records leave a lot to be desired. Uh, unless you can use your imagination and kinda, you know, hear what could have been. That's just me personally. Um, I really prefer Necroticism and the rest of their catalog. I even really love uh, Swan Song. And I also like Black Star, um, which was pretty much Carcass minus Bill Steer after um, Swan Song, which is apparently on Spotify. So check it out. I think it's called Black Star Rising, maybe on there, or maybe just Black Star. It's, it's good. Some good tunes. Check it out. What else do you have in the colored vinyl episode? I have what I like to think of as a classic metal album, uh, and it is Iron Maiden, The Number of the Beast, which has some amazing songs on it, and strangely enough, it comes on this That's bizarre pink vinyl, and on that side, has Eddie on it. I don't know where I ran across this or how I ran across this, I can't remember, but somehow I have this and I'm pretty happy with it actually. I mean, it's a great album and this is probably, probably unique, I guess, I don't know. It looks pretty unique. Let me step away for a second and see if I can quickly, probably not. It'll be a second due to the magic of editing. Oh, that's right, it will. I'm gonna pull out my version of Number of the Beasts. Which looks a little <laughs> worse for wear here. Oh, let me pull out my version <laughs> on standard black vinyl. Oh, it has the same. It still has the same Eddie. That's the only difference. It's the pink versus the black. Now the black on the back side has the track listing. Oh, it, it does, does too. too. It's just not nearly. It's... Oh, and it still has the. I was gonna say we're not sharing this. Video. <laughs> Get your own damn copy. <laughs> Yeah, it's got the track listing back there with some artwork. His is easier to read. Yeah. And there's the picture of Eddie. But mine's not pink. No. I think this is from 1982. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. But I have it. There you go. That was a small portion of our colored record collection. Or at least that's what we're going to say, and then we're going to go buy a bunch more. 
Very store day is coming up. When oh you have good opportunity. yeah, I'm going and I'm getting some shit. And the, we'll talk about what's coming out and what we're excited about in a couple weeks. So until then, head over to lotdpodcast.com or search live on tape delay via iTunes or whatever you do on the Android side. Probably go to a store. I don't know what y'all do. Y'all are crazy. Anyway, uh, live on tape delay. Look for us. Check it out. We've got over 100 episodes, and we've got some good stuff coming up for Season 3. And if you go to Instagram, you'll see, uh, at LOTD Podcast, you'll see some of these records and some other ones being posted as a part of the March Final Challenge. That uh, we are slacking on. So <laughs> we got to go because we got to post some records. So see you next time. Peace.